Try and stay a little bit straighter with this to start and then kind of move in. Right now I'm trying to keep my hand more up the back of it. That was 12. That was 12 for sure. Absolutely ace. I'm gonna try and just move in immediately. Try and create a little bit more rotation. Definitely spun that. Didn't rotate very much. And uh, definitely wasn't as far right as the last one, so. We'll try that again. Obviously, we're trying to make the angle a little bit steeper because um, when it doesn't get as far right, it just doesn't uh, hockey stick very much. So we're going to go back in the same spot, try and throw it a little bit better, get it a little bit further to the right, still creating some rotation. That was aced. And I almost 7 9 Wow. Wow, I would say so far it's pretty responsive to hand position changes. Uh, just so it's not a fluke, I'll try and move back to the right and just keep my hand more up the back of it. Yeah. Speechless, speechless. Do we just do we just keep going until I miss, or? All right, we'll move back to the left then. Just try something completely different again. The ball is sick. <laughs> that ball is absolutely sick. Uh, that was bad left, and it doesn't matter, it still held, but didn't strike. You can go to the stronger option, which is the DNA. Um, I would expect this to probably hook a little bit sooner and be a little bit smoother versus the other ball that's a little bit more polished. Um, it's going to be more like skid snappy, so definitely should see a difference in reaction. Um, I'm going to stay in the same spot where I was a little bit further left and creating some rotation, um, and we'll just kind of see what it does. So definitely less responsive, um, a little bit slower. You didn't see it like jerk when I threw it to the right, um, which is to be expected because this ball is just going to be a little bit better for A, probably a little bit more oil, and B, um, keeping the angle is probably a little bit straighter because that can sometimes happen when you move left with a bigger, stronger asymmetrical ball. The ball starts to burn up and it just uses that energy too much uh, in the front part of the lane. But we're going to throw one more. Um, that one I kind of got around. Um, so I'm going to try and be a little bit more forward with my release and kind of see what that gives. Yeah, so reaction difference, I would say the more rotation, um, you definitely saw that one hook a little bit sooner um, and kind of go through the pins a lot better versus creating rotation. So definitely just goes to show you the ball's using more energy um, sooner than something like a ruby. left yeah <laughs> um, so the next ball we're going to compare it to is the venom shock on paper they're pretty similar um, the only difference with the ruby is it's a little bit more polish versus this um, where it's got some surface on it no polish that was better okay that one definitely hooked a lot sooner um, than the ruby. Uh, so we're definitely gonna have to move further left and then kind of see if we can get lined up. And then on this one, we're gonna still keep our hand a little bit more forward, not get around it quite yet. So obviously that was much better. Um, it definitely got a little bit further down the lane before um, it started to hook um, and actually hit the pocket. So. Uh, we're going to stand in the same spot, kind of tinker with our release a little bit, create more rotation, and then see kind of what it does. It might not be as technical as pro shop guys. 
definitely not going to be this technical. That's for sure. Uh, but we're just gonna we're just gonna throw it where I where I think it should be, and then we'll move off of that. So I think I just got it a little too uh, a little too far to the outside that time. So we're gonna <clears throat> keep our feet where uh, where they were before, but I'm gonna move my eyes to the left just a smidge. Uh, two two boards. I'm gonna move my eyes left two boards. You're welcome. <sighs> now it's too much. So I'm gonna split the difference, and we'll uh, I'll move my eyes one board to the right, and it should be money. It got there. I still didn't uh, necessarily like the result. It's a little wobbly down lane where I'm playing, so I, I think I'm gonna move left and just slow it down a little bit. That was that was a good shot. <laughs> that, that was aced. Um, that was good. You like that? Black venom, man. <laughs> yeah, this is uh this is impressive. I was a I was a huge fan of the IQ Emerald. I've had quite a few of them. And I almost think I like this more. It just seems like it has a little bit more recovery and a little bit more back in motion than the Emerald did. Yeah, that was good. All right, I'm just gonna throw the same shot here, but I'm gonna try and execute it a little better. So, I'm definitely seeing that ball pick up earlier, but it's not um, its not dying, which is a good sign just because it's a bigger ball, but it's definitely reading earlier than the Ruby for sure. I love the Venom Shock. I've always had one. I kind of know what to expect, and I know that it's going to hook a lot more. And there you go. I know a Venom Shock when I throw one, even if it's not mine. Well, let's get some shots with this uh, IQ Ruby. So it's kind of slow as it makes its move down lane, but I like it, especially when you start seeing lanes where the ball reaction is a little unpredictable kind of helps maintain a stable roll through the pins. I really got around that one just to make it bend a little more. Yeah, you can see the six pin side ball that one. Yeah. I've got to tell you, the, uh, the scent's probably what I love most about it. I was actually uh, on my way down here and, you know, it was a little bit of a drive, but there's nothing like getting in your car and smelling your storm balls. There we go. That was better. So like I said, it's, it's really stable as it makes its move. When it's going through the pins, it's very easy to read how the ball's finishing. And more importantly, as I'm making my adjustments, I can almost already expect what the ball is going to do or know what it'll do because it is so predictable. It's not a ball that is inconsistent or just harder to control because of the way it responds to the friction. I really like that.
Not a bad miss. <laughs> That's going to tournaments with me. I, uh, I like to compare this to my phase two. It's been a ball that's been in Storm's lineup for quite some time, and it's one that probably shouldn't be a surprise to many people because it's such a great benchmark ball. So let me grab that, and what I mean by that is it's a good go-to if you want to get a read on the lane, if you want to understand what you're really working with because it's strong enough to use it on some of the fresh patterns. But yet, if you let it shine up a little bit, just some lane shine, you should be able to use it even later in the day or even if you bowl league, depending on how the lane is transitioning. It could also be a ball that you use for game two and game three. And you can see that roll is still smooth and continuous as you would want it. That was a pretty good guess. I actually haven't thrown that on this lane, but. So, yes, I am. I'm a regional staffer. Storm's always been a, a great supporter. But you know, it's, it's definitely a brand that has proven itself with time. They make great quality products. Pretty hard to miss the hole with them. <laughs> but this is a much bigger ball, bigger cover, bigger core. So we're gonna try to see if we can make this ball bend a little bit more, considering how slow responsive it is. So you can see that, again, just really, really smooth. And it's really, it's what I use, it's what I like. I know many people, when you see me bowl, you might think, oh wow, well, his ball's just, very tumbly, it rolls a lot, it's naturally smooth, but in reality, you could still use this even if if you have a smoother ball roll or if you have uh, a ball roll that is a lot quicker on, on friction and it's just more angular. These balls fit great in your arsenal. Still better, pretty consistent. Uh, final thoughts, so obviously we threw the Ruby and the DNA. Um, I would transition from the DNA to the Ruby. Um, if the DNA starts maybe hooking a little bit too soon, it starts burning up. Um, the Ruby definitely had more energy retention um, going through the pins, and uh, overall I think it's uh, pretty fire, pretty responsive to hand position changes. Uh, I loved my Emerald, so uh, super excited to see what, uh, what this one brings in tournament play. Final thoughts on the ball, what do you think of it? Um, I would definitely going to say it's, an, it's the nut, for me at least. Um, I was, like I said, I was a huge fan of the IQ series, the Tour, uh, the Emerald, I had three of those. Um, I'm definitely more of a fan of the Ruby than the Emerald, like this is definitely going everywhere with me. Um, definitely the nut, for sure. So go pick one up. Miguel, what do you think of the ball? So I absolutely love... Uh, the IQ Ruby. Again, I'm a huge fan of the IQ series. I use the IQ Tours a lot when I did bowl the National Tour stops, and I love their consistent roll. I love how their ball is just really predictable on the back end. And, uh, you know, for this ball, I just think it's fire. Like, it's one of my best uh, go to balls as the ball, as the lane starts transitioning, where I get a ball that goes down the lane but still responds in a predictive way that I can manipulate how much I want that ball to react or how little. So. It's a tournament ball for me.